Patricia Gibson. Hey. Number 11, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> um, Mr Speaker, with your permission, sir, I'll take questions 11 and 16 together. Um, Mr Speaker, our exit from the European Union has given us the freedom uh, to conceive and implement rules that put UK businesses first. Only last week, the Government announced further reforms to reduce burdens on businesses, which I'm sure she will welcome and her party, and help unleash innovation. Uh, propel economic growth across the whole country, the whole United Kingdom. And this government's action to seize the opportunities of Brexit is already having an impact. As she well knows, the International Monetary Fund is expecting the United Kingdom to see the fastest GDP growth in the G7 this year, something about which the entire House can be proud. Yeah. Patricia Gibson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And back here on planet Earth, <laughs> <laughs> rather than a sea of opportunity, we are drowning in Brexit despair uh -huh. as the Scottish food and drink sector is sacrificed on the altar of Brexit at yeah. a cost of £2 billion on pre-pandemic levels because of this hard Tory Brexit. With extensive trade barriers, extra red tape, labour shortages and damage to brand Scotland, yeah. with industry figures warning that they will not come close to making up the EU market losses. Given this damage, how does the UK Government plan to mitigate the damage it has caused to Scotland's economy? Yeah. Here, here. Well, Mr Speaker, I mean, our exit from the European Union provides us with positives. I know that uh, the Honourable Lady and her party wish to focus on negatives. The relentless negativity of the Scottish Nationalists really is a wonder to behold. But the fact of the matter is that the opportunity to think boldly about how we regulate gives us, gives us the freedom to conceive, gives us the freedom to implement those rules which will put the United Kingdom that's all constituent parts of the United Kingdom, including Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and England, first. 